Hello and welcome to Onion Unlimited the podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Torridan, and I'm joined in the corner by Mariella. Hello. Hello. So we're back with three more Flax and Wick lessons this time. We're looking at spirituality, overcoming fear and setting boundaries. So we'll dive straight into the first one, lesson 10, all about spirituality. Welcome to Healing and Rebuilding After Leaving Jehovah's Witnesses. Lesson 10. Spirituality. Although Jehovah's Witnesses prioritise spirituality, at least their version of it, we have left this until quite late in the course. This is because your physical and mental healing needs to be in place before you move on to more spiritual matters, such as what you believe. It's only when you are sure of who you are physically, mentally, and spiritually, that you will be in a position to develop new, deep relationships with other people. Some who leave Jehovah's Witnesses join a new religion, usually a Christian denomination, often in order to recreate the social aspect that they've lost by exiting the cult. Many, feeling disillusioned at religion, turn to atheism. You may feel there are only these two options, but this is not the case. Spirituality is a broad concept with room for many perspectives. In general, it includes a sense of connection to something bigger than yourself, and it typically involves a search for meaning in life. Spirituality means different things to different people. What does spirituality mean to you? For some, it is a belief in God or the Bible. It can even involve being religious, but not necessarily. There are many spiritual but not religious people. Spirituality might involve meditation, connecting with your higher self, or even the universe as a whole. Many find their spirituality in creativity, or pursuing a personal talent, especially if this is of benefit to other people. Finding your own spirituality apart from Jehovah's Witnesses can be challenging, but also very fulfilling. Cults like Jehovah's Witnesses do everything they can to stifle your spirituality in exchange for a life of religious control. You've broken free from these chains. Don't be quick to return to a life of religious slavery. Very good. So, spirituality and Jehovah's Witnesses. Would you say that Jehovah's Witnesses, when you were a witness, would you say that was ever really a spiritual experience? Not completely, no. No. Based on what I know now i would say definitely not at the time it was religious it was religious yeah at the time obviously you thought it was spiritual spiritual um but it really wasn't but the the idea of spirituality was always based on how much you were doing yeah in terms of um assigned tasks basically wasn't it how busy you were yeah, yeah how busy you were in uh how much ministry you did, how many hours you put in, um, how many meetings you went to, that sort of thing. Yeah. Always being seen, putting in an appearance. It was always about uh, statistics. Um, I I know when I I was a witness, spiritually speaking, I mean, I was really busy. Mm. If I wasn't a minister or servant or an elder, I was a pioneer. And uh, I always used to feel that there was something lacking Mm-hmm. Even though I was like doing loads of hours in the ministry, it never really felt like a spiritual experience. I think also that comes down to always being told you're not doing enough. Mm. No matter how much you're doing, it's never enough. So yeah, it's you're not feeling complete within yourself that yeah. I'm doing the best I can. And even if you are doing, even if you already are, hello, you're still feeling like yeah. you're not. Yeah, made to feel like you're not. Yeah, and it always. You're only as good as your last report, aren't you? Yeah. You know, like if you're a regular pioneer and you're banging in the hours and then you have a bad month. Yeah. All of a sudden it like, feels like yeah. you're being judged, you know, because you didn't get your uh, get your and time you in or whatever. You no. are. There's no two ways about it. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's why in 2006 when I was disfellowshipped the first time for apostasy, um, I've said it before, I felt very 
spiritual during that period when I was yeah. disfellowshipped. Um, and then 2009, when I got reinstated for the sake of my family, all of a sudden it felt like my spirituality had evaporated. You couldn't be true to yourself. No. You had to be something based on somebody else's expectation of you. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I just went back to being busy again. Yeah. Uh, busy isn't spiritual. I mean, even after after leaving the second time in 2019, I was still looking for something spiritually. I mean, I, I initially thought that the answer was to look in Christianity, mm -hmm. general Christianity. So I, I went along to a couple of churches. I went along to the Pentecost stores, dropped into the C of E. Okay. But again, I just didn't, I didn't feel like it was spiritual. It was religious. There was mm -hmm. a lot going on yeah. religiously. But again, it just, there was something, something lacking there. Um, and I, I basically came to the conclusion that, um, Religion wasn't necessary for spirituality, and in, in actual fact, religion can uh, stifle spirituality. Absolutely, that's the conclusion I came. Absolutely. I mean, even if it's a really good religion, and there are there are some religions that do a tremendous lot of good for people, mm. but even then, I think it's unnecessary. Why why can't you just do good for people without the religious framework? Yeah, you know. That's what I think. Even even if uh, it's a good religion, it's still all about controlling people. Yeah, at the end of the day. That's what a religious organisation is yeah. about. So I went on to realise that my spirituality was to be found in uh, creativity. I still think if you're at a, a, a music uh, concert, a music venue, that's a spiritual experience. Oh, definitely. Definitely. You know, all the people coming together. Um. Yeah, creativity is my is the way I go about my spirituality now, and also um, trying to uh, offer my services to guide people spiritually as well where I can. I wouldn't I wouldn't class myself as a leader or a teacher particularly because it's up In to each aspects. person yeah. what they do spiritually, yeah. but you know at least be there to sort of guide people. And it's really simple. The answers, the spiritual answers, are within yourself. Exactly. You don't need to do what somebody else tells you. You just need to look inside yourself and find what uh, what you what resonates with you, haven't you? So yeah, that's how I feel now. And uh, it just struck me the other day, actually, that Jehovah's Witnesses still, even now, you know, three years on, there's probably ones that are still judging us as not being spiritual. Absolutely. Because we left or Absolutely. we live together without being married or, mm. you know, mm. you got a tattoo, my hair's long. <laughs> i got a nose ring. you got a nose ring. Yeah, it's crazy, <laughs> isn't it? That's the sort of thing that they base yeah. spirituality or lack of spirituality on and couldn't be further from the truth. So if you're not doing all the cult stuff, the meetings and the ministry and all that sort of thing, they, they gauge you as being unspiritual, mm. uh, which is why they do the reporting. If they didn't, if you didn't have to put a report oh, that's in, that's right. Yeah, it's all about appearances. Yeah, if you didn't put a report in, they'd never know, would they? Mm -hmm. What you what you were doing. So there you go. Lesson number ten: spirituality. Right. So we're moving into our next lesson now. Lesson number eleven, really important one for uh, former Jehovah's Witnesses, and that is overcoming fear. Lesson eleven: overcoming fear. It is said that there are basically only two motivators, love and fear. Jehovah's Witnesses use fear to control their members. Even after leaving the organisation, you can find that you have residual fears, such as dying at Armageddon or not receiving a resurrection into the Paradise Earth. It's important to note that these threats are not real. They are merely used by the cult to control its members. So that was a really short lesson, um, but really important. I like the uh, the thought there that there's really only two ways of motivating someone, and that is either love or fear. Yeah. And of course, they they try the love bombing to start with, don't they? Which isn't love. It's just love. Bombing. It's just love bombing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
It's interesting, isn't it? They don't go to the door and try to scare you into becoming a Jehovah's Witness. Oh, no, no, no. They never come to the door and say, if you don't join us, you're going to die at Armageddon. Well, not yet. No. That that message hasn't come across yet. No. They always try. It's (laughs) Well, it's it's basically attract or repel, isn't it? And they start off trying to attract you. And then once you're in, then the the big guns come out and it's all about uh, scaring you into obeying. Yeah. Yeah. So what kind of fears are used, would you say? Um, well, loss of family, first and foremost. That's a big one. And and unlike the other two, Armageddon and not being resurrected, the loss of family, that's a very real thing. That's immediate. Yeah, and it's real. Yeah. You know, like Armageddon and uh, not, being not being resurrected is just a fictitious yeah. religious idea. But, yeah, taking your family away, that's, uh, that's a very real and fear. And having to start. All over again from mm-hmm. nothing, particularly if you've been born in yep. and the organisation is all you've known, you, you've not been allowed to have outside association yep. um, or follow any hobbies or get any, you know, higher education. Yep. You know, it's particularly people that leave at our ages, you know, in their 40s and 50s. That's a whole new... I, I would say that's why probably quite a few that are physically uh, in, but mentally out, yeah. you know, the old PMOs. Oh, definitely. That's probably the reason why a lot don't leave. Yeah. Because they're scared of what they're going to lose. Well, they have a lot to lose. They've got a lot to yeah. lose. Yeah, and starting over. So, uh, But if you are already out, um, you've not got anything else to lose. So the fear doesn't kind of work so That's much. True. The, That's true. The direct threats don't work, but they can still make you scared of Armageddon, still make you scared of not getting a resurrection. There's so many that leave the organisation. They don't believe it anymore. Yeah. But they they still worry about dying at Armageddon. And the indoctrination too in itself. I mean, even if you don't believe that Armageddon is a real thing. Um, you still fall back to I mean, you dream about things like that. You yeah. have nightmares about things like that. I think it was Marianne mentioned it in one yeah. of her comments, you know, a previous video that, um, you know, for years, she still, for years. you know, yeah. had nightmares about Being dying at Armageddon. Some, something that isn't real. Yeah. I mean, Amazing that indoctrination that. is real and that it, it's, it's, bad, it's, it's as bad as hell. Oh, absolutely. No, the hell, hell yeah. doctrine. Yeah. Whereas he used to say, oh, you know, Jehovah's God of love, he wouldn't send anyone to hell. No, but he takes your family away. Not for eternity, no. Destroys your Armageddon. <laughs> and, and the shame as well. I the think shame of being labelled an apostate. Mm, that that yeah. was something I used to be very um, fearful of. Yeah, just bearing that label, but I event- eventually you just realise. Yeah, yeah. Um, when you were disassociated, when I was, before I disassociated, when I when I first woke up, mm. I was very and I was inactive. Inactive was sort of like a nice way of saying. But even that's know, a shame. But even thing, that isn't it? is a shame. They use it to shame you. Oh, yeah. you're inactive. You're not doing anything. You're not being spiritual. So it all it's all linked in. Yeah. Um, but so yeah, the, the, the label of apostate was probably one of the hardest for me to come to terms with that I was going to be viewed as an as apostate. An apostate. Yeah. So, so it's basically the way to overcome it is, as it said in that video, first of all, realize that the threats of Armageddon and not being resurrected are not real. Yeah. There's no substance to it. It's purely a, a mental construct. Yeah. Um, disfellowshipping, if you've already... If you're already disfellowship, you've basically got nothing else to lose. Yeah, or disassociated. Or yep. disassociated, you know. Um, Understanding the definition of what an apostate what is. What an apostate is. It's not what it's they not label what it they to be. It is. So no. it, once, you, once you accept that the definition of it is nothing, yeah. you know, earth-shattering. Technically speaking, every Jehovah's Witness that is an used to be in another religion church. was... Yeah. Is an apostate. Yeah, exactly. So if you look up the definition of apostate, it's basically just somebody that rejects a former religious or philosophical belief. Yeah, that's and all And if the is. reason that you're rejecting it is because that belief is untrue, then that's a good thing. Exactly. So don't be shamed by it. Uh, wear that badge with some honour. Well, you're championing the truth. Mm. That's what they like to use. That's they it. like to say they're champions of truth. They're not really, but you have become one if you've decided yeah. to leave. So uh, 
I, I was thinking the other day on something, I, I was reluctant to make a decision in a certain area. And it's it suddenly dawned on me that I was still operating from a basis of fear. Mm. All those years of worrying what other people are going to yes. think about yeah. you. Because you do, well, don't you, when you're a witness. Reputation was a reputation, very huge thing. Huge thing. Huge thing within the organisation, um, yeah. And you can't you can't carry on living from a position of fear. You yeah. can't do it. You've got to live uh, live uh, authentically, haven't you? Yeah. Good. So that was uh, overcoming fear, lesson eleven. Now we're going to look at lesson number twelve, all about setting boundaries. Lesson twelve: setting boundaries. When it comes to setting boundaries. It's vital to recognise that boundaries are for you, not the other person. It's not possible to control how another person acts, nor is it desirable. Boundaries relate to how you react to a situation. Download the Triggers and Responses Worksheet from flaxandwick.org forward slash resources. Think about things that trigger you. Make a list of three things. Ask yourself how you usually react when someone oversteps a boundary and presses your buttons. Now consider how you will respond in the future. This is all part of reprogramming yourself. So that was a really good uh, lesson, I think. A really good point at the beginning there, that the boundaries that we set are not for other people, mm. they're for ourselves. Yeah. Because you can't. Not only can you not control what somebody else does, but it's not really desirable, is it? Because well, we've spent all our life being controlled. Being controlled and trying to control others. Yeah. And it doesn't work. It doesn't work, no. So when you set boundaries, you're really only talking about personal boundaries. You're talking about controlling your own mm. reactions and responses to things. Um I think it's really hard as a former witness to say no to somebody. We were people pleasers. People pleasers. Yeah. Again, appearances. Yeah. Reputation. Yeah. That indoctrination is so ingrained within us. Yeah. That um, even on the outside, once we were out of the organisation, we still find it difficult to step back and say, hey, no, this is not serving a good enough purpose for me to say yes to, yeah. um, I'm going to yeah. say no. I mean, it's, it's such a small word, isn't it? No. Yeah. They say no is a sentence in itself, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. I did start saying no to people when I was a witness. Um, it's not easy. When I was an elder, uh, there was another elder in the congregation that was very controlling and he used to make us all go and have uh, these uh, sort of ad hoc elders meetings after the congregation meetings. No agenda. It was just we're having another elders meeting to discuss, you know, so-and-so or whatever. Or throwing their weight around. Throwing their weight around. And I, I had enough of it in the end. I, I still remember the time I was talking to a, an elderly sister in the congregation and she was, like, telling me all her woes and everything. And this elder came over to me and said... Uh, Dan, upstairs now, elders meeting. And I just turned around to him and said, no. Good on you. Yeah. And he was like, what do you mean, no? I said, no, I'm not, <laughs> not going. <laughs> well, it wasn't, you know, pre Well, not only that, I was, in, I was in the middle of talking to and someone. And you're talking to somebody, like, exactly. It's like you don't yeah. interrupt people's conversations. Yeah, but once you start saying no, you get a target on your back mm -hmm. quite often. Yeah. Very true. But yeah, set boundaries, uh, decide where your personal boundaries are. And if somebody oversteps that boundary, if they, they come into an area that you don't want them, it's not about what you do to them, is it? You don't do something that to them. You do something to yourself. You retreat. You retreat, exactly. You retreat from the situation yeah. or you say, you know, if you do that, I will do this. Mm -hmm. you know. And be consistent. And be Follow consistent. through yeah. with, look, yeah. if you're going to speak to me that way, I'm not going to follow through with this or I'm going to leave the situation. Yeah. Um, Quite often that's all it takes if you if you're, uh, if you you follow through on one occasion, they realise that you're serious. Yeah. There's, a, there's an old uh, saying, isn't there, about people only 
treat you the way that you expect them, them to or allow them to. to treat, yeah. yeah, that's it. Very good. Uh, that triggers and responses exercise is good. You have to imagine that you're a little robot with three buttons and you have to, that exercise is all about picking the three buttons that regularly get pressed with you. <laughs> so like for me, for example, it would be patience. I'm not very patient. So I've got an impatient button, haven't I? Mm -hmm. now, how do I normally react when I get impatient? Impatiently. <laughs> <laughs> impatiently. Yeah. <laughs> How will I react in the future? A little bit future? frustrated, a little bit... Take a breath. Yeah, just calm. Yeah, right. that's it. Chill, my love. Yeah, people are going to be surprised at that, that I'm impatient. I was surprised by that. Yeah. but Because um, you're such a patient person gen in general. I am generally so, yeah. very patient when it comes to big things. But when you're need to, when you waiting, that's the only thing that you're mm, not... I find waiting, waiting difficult. Yeah. Yeah. If, if I can see a route through, yeah. I just want it done now. Yeah. You know, like I was on the phone today to uh, the tax office for like 45 minutes. <laughs> that was doing my head in. That was 45 well, minutes. Well, the music on, the on hold oh, music God. is not uh, not fun and very repetitive and it does your head in. Yeah. But uh, well, that's yeah. it. It's about identifying sort of three areas where you think, mm, don't really like the way that I react. Yeah. And in future, when someone presses that button, I'm going to react this way. Uh, and it's all, it's all about just uh, reprogramming yourself, exactly. isn't it? Exactly, yeah. Good. Better, bettering yourself. Bettering so by yourself. reprogramming, um, yeah, it, view it as a self-improvement. Mm. Yeah. You can only get better. Yeah. Yeah. And once you're outside the cult, uh, you've got every opportunity to limit. be better because you haven't yeah. got the cult in, exactly. interfering every two yeah. minutes. Very good. So uh, that's our next Three lessons on Flax and Wick, which is a 16 lesson course. We're shooting through them now. Lesson 10, Spirituality. Lesson 11, Overcoming Fear. Lesson 12, Setting Boundaries. And there will be another lesson uploaded tomorrow. Yeah. So that's all from me. And me. And you. Join us again soon. Bye for now. Bye.